wife and I just uh, thank the Lord for, for being here today and what a service we're having. Amen. Amen. It's okay. We can just go ahead and worship the Lord and, and give him praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor Prophet, for, for giving us that melody. Hallelujah. Lord, I'll praise you. Hallelujah. That was amazing. Amen. We thank the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank God for Evangelist Georgia Walters as well. Thank you for your word. You're always so encouraging every time you come on and, and say something. It's always uplifting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is in the midst. Hallelujah. Thank you, Deaconess, for putting that in the chat. And we thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so I just am grateful today. And I can relate to that to that testimony about the, the woman that Evangelist Walters just mentioned that was in that state. And that's why the doctors were so uh, amazed this week uh, when my, my mother coming from that stroke uh, just snapped, I mean, after the prayer, literally it was the next day. <laughs> hallelujah, <laughs> hallelujah, come on somebody. I just, I know that God is real, <laughs> hallelujah. I know that God can do anything, hallelujah, but fail, hallelujah. So we thank the Lord, amen, for all the wonderful testimonies and all the things that God is doing in the midst of his people. Praise the Lord, amen, amen. So let us pray, hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for being in this service today. We thank you for all that has transpired up until this point. We thank you, Lord, for your move. We thank you, Lord, even for the Sunday school and the lesson that you gave Sister Petty. We thank you, Lord, hallelujah, even for those that have been participating today, the devotional leader, Deaconess Sheree, and the, then the prayer by Deaconess Morales, hallelujah, and even the testimonies that we heard from various ones, Father God. We thank you for what you're doing today, Father God. Now I decrease that you might increase in me, O oh Lord. Arise today, Father God, hallelujah. For Lord, I have nothing to say except you give me to say it, Father God. Have your way, Lord Jesus, hallelujah. Father God, give us eyes that we may see you, hallelujah. Give us ears that we may hear you, Lord, hallelujah. And give us a heart that we might understand what thus saith the Lord in this hour, hallelujah. We thank you, Father God, hallelujah. Bless your people today, Lord, hallelujah. Continue, hallelujah, to, to raise up, bow down heads, Father God. Continue, Lord, to bring inspiration to those that needs a boost, Father God. We thank you, Lord, by the power of the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, hallelujah, that your presence fills this place, Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah. And we thank you, Lord, hallelujah, for being here with us today, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let the ministry of your word have free course in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, go ahead and testify, Sister Dana, that God can do anything. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, uh, anybody, everybody put something in the chat to give God some praise. Hallelujah. Because uh, apparently there's a worship that is that is that's, that's brewing up. Hallelujah. And we might just take this moment. Hallelujah. Just to give God some praise. Hallelujah. Praise him, hallelujah, wherever you are, hallelujah. We give thanks to the Lord, hallelujah, for being in our midst. We thank you, Father God, hallelujah. We thank you, Lord Jesus, hallelujah. We thank God, hallelujah, Lord Jesus, hallelujah. Have your way, Lord, have your way, Lord. Have your way in the midst of the service, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. We've been told to reach up and grab it, hallelujah. Reach up and grab it, hallelujah. It is not far, it is right here, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus, hallelujah. We thank you, Father God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, hallelujah. We give you praise, honor, and glory. It belongs to you, oh God, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus, hallelujah. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord Jesus, hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you, Lord, for all things. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus, hallelujah. I thank you, Lord Jesus, hallelujah. Praise God, saints, hallelujah. Praise be to the most high God. He's worthy of all the praise. The Bible says, let everything that have breath 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So we don't take it for granted that we have use of our tongue today to be able to praise him and to lift him up. Hallelujah. We don't take it for granted. Hallelujah. Because there's some that can't do that. Hallelujah. But we thank God. Hallelujah. That we're able to praise him and come together. Hallelujah. Today as we are. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. I'm excited today, saints. I'm excited to be amongst you this morning. Praise the Lord. Afternoon for those of you that are in different time zones. Praise the Lord. But we give God praise. Hallelujah for everyone that is present here today. Hallelujah. Just giving honor to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. As we know that all of us, hallelujah, are on this journey. We're on this walk. Hallelujah. Amen. And sometimes we need Hallelujah, the, 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 the assembling of the saints. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like coming together and the anointing of God flowing the way it does and, and filling us with his presence in our hearts and giving us an infusion of power, hallelujah, that we may be able to go forth, hallelujah, and to, and to stand in the victory that the Lord Jesus Christ gave us on the cross, hallelujah. Stand in your victory, saints, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, hallelujah. Stand in your victory. Thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're gonna go to the book of Judges, hallelujah, for the word of the Lord today, hallelujah, as we um, break the bread of life, hallelujah, that God has placed on my heart for today, hallelujah. We're going to go to the book of Judges, the sixth chapter, hallelujah. We're going to read a few verses, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, just Lord. Judges, the sixth chapter, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah, starting with the 11th verse, Judges 6 chapter, starting with the 11th verse, it reads as follows. And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak, which was in Ophrah, that pertained unto Joash the Abazarite, and his son Gideon threshed wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, the Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon said unto him, oh, my Lord, if the Lord be with us, then why then is all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles, which our fathers told us of saying, did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord have forsaken us and has delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him and said, go in this might and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? And he said unto him, oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said unto him, surely I will be with thee and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. And he said unto him, if now I have found grace in thy sight, then show me a sign that thou talkest with me. Hallelujah. This is the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Saints of God, this passage of scripture is a conversation about confidence. Gideon was in a place where for some reason he had no confidence in himself or even the situation or even that which God was speaking to him. This is a story of a man who didn't have confidence in himself to rise to the occasion that God had purpose for him to walk in. And so as I begin to think about this, 
I started to hear and meditate on this confidence. And confidence in the Bible, in the King James Bible, is actually found 38 times. There's 38 verses in the Bible, nine from the Old Testament and nine from the New Testament, nine books. Nine books from the Old Testament, nine books in the New Testament that have confidence, that word confidence in the King James Bible. Hallelujah. And confidence is one of those things that that God is wanting us to have. And I'm going to share with you a few scriptures on, on confidence, because when we are in this walk and when we are facing certain things, there's a certain level of godly confidence that we must have, hallelujah, in order for us to continue to go and to do, hallelujah, and to stand up and to represent our God, hallelujah. It takes godly confidence, hallelujah. And we know sometimes that confidence is shaken in some people because of circumstances and things and scenarios and people and trauma and all kinds of things that might come to shake your confidence, hallelujah. But Proverbs 3 and 26 says, for the Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot from being taken. Hallelujah. The prophet Isaiah says in Isaiah 30 and 15, he says, for thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall ye be saved. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. Hallelujah. And ye would not. Hallelujah. In the book of Acts, hallelujah, there's another scripture on confidence Hallelujah. Acts 28 and 31 says, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no man forbidding him. Hallelujah. Do you know that even as a minister of the gospel that you have to have confidence that you are speaking, hallelujah, the truth and the word of God, hallelujah. The Bible tells us to, to preach the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence confidence. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. How many of you today feel like that you have godly confidence? Hallelujah. You've got confidence to be able to go out and do what God is asking you to do. Hallelujah. Even in the New Testament, another scripture in Ephesians talks about Ephesians 3, Verses 11 and 12 says, according to the eternal purpose, which he purposed in Christ Jesus, our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. Praise the Lord. And then Hebrews 10 and 35 says, cast not away your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I want to say to anybody today that has maybe gotten a little sidetracked, hallelujah, and 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 your your zeal, hallelujah, or your ability to really stand firm in the faith that God has given you has been altered for some reason. Praise the Lord. God is saying this morning, cast not away your confidence. Hallelujah. The Lord knows that we are going through what we're going through. He knows that uh, we're, we're, we're having multiple scenarios, multiple health conditions, multiple financial scenarios, multiple things that are happening in and around the church, in and around our families. But the Lord is saying, cast not away your confidence. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Keep your confidence. Hallelujah. And so you understand that when we talk about confidence, we're talking about uh, the feeling or the belief that you can rely upon something. Praise the Lord. Can you rely upon the word of God? Of course we can. Hallelujah. We can re rely upon the word of God. We can rely upon the Lord, hallelujah, to have our backs. We can rely upon, hallelujah, everything that God has spoken, hallelujah. It is a feeling of 
uh, truth about something. Confidence also is a self-assurance, hallelujah, even in that which God has given you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We're talking about confidence this morning. Now, based on those things, we, we understand that Gideon did not have confidence in this particular situation. There are others in the Bible that gives us scenarios where these men of God had certain times in their lives where they did not have total godly confidence. Moses, when God told them, you better go talk to Pharaoh. You tell him what I said. And Moses came back and said, wait a minute, Lord, I, I speak slow. I, I, he might not even respect my authority. So you know what the Lord ended up doing. The Lord ended up having his brother, amen, to go with him. He said, "He said, uh, Aaron will be your prophet, amen. And you got to understand the context of what God meant when he said that. He said that as God gave the word to Moses and Moses told Aaron what it was, and Aaron would be the one to be the mouthpiece, praise the Lord, because that excuse of, of the language or his speech impediment was not going to get in the way of the purpose of God. Hallelujah. And you got to understand, hallelujah, that anything that is causing you to feel a little bit um, unconfident or not confident, hallelujah, it does not have to get in the way of the ultimate purpose of God, because God can use you exactly the way that you are. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Jeremiah, he was a young prophet, hallelujah. Matter of fact, he told the Lord, he said, look, I can't go talk to these people. I'm just a young man. They're not going to listen to me. Praise the Lord. And but the Lord touched him. He sent the angel down, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Pastor Prophet, Pastor Harris, you know, you know the story. He sent the angel down to touch the man of God on his tongue. Praise the Lord. He said, wait a minute. We're going to fix this right now. Hallelujah. When God sends any one of us into an assignment, God has already accounted for the things that we might consider a shortcoming. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You mean God can use me with my shortcomings? Absolutely he can. How? Because he is God and he can do anything. So our shortcomings, hallelujah, are impediments, our handicaps, our disabilities and those things hallelujah, has nothing to do with when God says that I have you on an assignment to do something, then God has already factored in what you can and cannot do. <laughs> hallelujah. You just got to get it in your mind that God is going to use what I got. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There might be something about you that might not be totally uh, strong. That's okay. God will use the other parts of you that is strong. Praise the Lord. You got to understand that, that God is not like man. Well, you know, we look at things from a certain perspective, and if we can't do it a certain way, then we like, oh, well, it's not right. No, no, let me tell you something. God can come any way he wants. Praise the Lord. If you can't use your left hand, God will strengthen your right hand. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Ask somebody, hallelujah, who've had an ailment and who've had to, had to take a, another limb of theirs and use it. It probably wasn't the dominant one, praise the Lord, but it became dominant when the other one didn't have use anymore. Praise the Lord. God is going to use what you got. Hallelujah. What you got is enough. Praise the Lord. Don't let the enemy talk you out of your assignment in God. Because the Lord, hallelujah, can use exactly what you got. <laughs> hallelujah. And you say, well, wait a minute. Well, what I got don't mean that much. I, I, I didn't know that I could do this. I didn't know that God could use me in this area. Well, guess what? It's okay. Because God is going to astonish you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He just wants you to have confidence. Hallelujah. That if God said it, Hallelujah. It will come to pass. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, we know that people sometimes struggle with their own self-esteem issues. Come on, somebody. I know somebody might have just looked in the mirror even this morning and said, wow, I don't like what I see. Praise the Lord. But you know, God, he made us. 
fearfully and wonderfully. God made each and every one of us fearfully and wonderfully. Reverently, God made you. God knew exactly the faculties that he was going to use when he gave you your kingdom assignment. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And you might not even see the value in yourself or why on earth that God will ask you to do this. And I remember we've got some who God has said, hey, I want you to teach Sunday school. I want you to teach Bible study. I want you to preach the gospel. Praise the Lord. God spoke these things. Praise the Lord. And sometimes our reaction is like Gideon's. Not me, Lord. <laughs> me? Really? Me? Hallelujah. And you know what? When we have issues with our own confidence, it also leaks over into the decisions that we make. How much more better would our lives be if we had the context of confidence, godly confidence? And now when you're making decisions about work, when you're making decisions about uh, medical things, when you're making decisions about money, when you're making decisions about career, making decisions about business, making decisions about things that you gotta do. Now, when you see it through the context of godly confidence, now it looks different, praise the Lord. Because it's no longer based on your ability, praise the Lord, it's gonna be based on God's ability, hallelujah. And you may not even feel like that you're the type of person who could be assertive enough to even share a word of God with somebody or even give them encouragement spiritually. You may not feel deep down that you have that ability, but let me tell you something, when the Holy Ghost takes over and you got to be a willing participant. Let me tell you something right now. You got to be open to be used by God. Hallelujah. Don't allow the enemy to cause you to resist God because you got lack of confidence. Hallelujah. That's a trick of the enemy. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But guess what? God understands exactly what's in your mind. Hallelujah. He knows our thoughts from afar off. Praise the Lord. And nobody else, and this is the interesting thing about this, nobody else will have any idea of where we are lacking confidence. Nobody is going around saying, I lack confidence in this, or I lack confidence in that. It just comes out in the natural course of things. But rest assured, God has already accounted for those things. Somebody just receive right now that God knows you. Hallelujah. Say, God knows me. God knows me. Praise the Lord. God knows me. Hallelujah. And find some confidence in that, that God knows me. Praise the Lord. And God is wanting you to know you through his eyes. <laughs> See, we've been, we've been conditioned in this earthly vessel. We've been conditioned to see ourselves through ourselves. We see ourselves through ourselves. And that's flawed. <laughs> I'm just saying it's flawed, right? Because we're flawed. Praise the Lord. We, we're, we're not perfect. And so we're not going to have a 100% accurate point of view on the creation that the creator made. So God knows us and God has fashioned us in the exact way that we should be. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't have room for improvement because we do. Praise the Lord. That don't mean that you stop doing what you got to do to improve yourself, to be better and all that. No, it's not what we're saying here, but what we're saying is that God has already accounted for the things, hallelujah, that make you, you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so here it is. We have this conversation in the book of Judges with Gideon. Now, in verse 12, Judges 6, chapter verse 12, it says, and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, the Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. Now, I want you to understand what just happened in that verse of scripture. Before God told Gideon what he wanted him to do, he spoke directly into his spirit and gave Gideon a glimpse of how God sees him. And just like many of you, 
You have gotten words from the Lord. You've gotten a word right in this ministry. You've gotten a word over the course of the years. You've gotten a glimpse of how God sees you. And the question is, have you completely embraced how God sees you? He said, Gideon, the Lord is with thee. This is the angel talking to him. Thou mighty man of valor. Because he knew that the Israelites were there in a cave. <laughs> they were in caves because they were, they had not yet totally conquested the land of Canaan. Amen. This is even after Joshua had come. This is in the time of the judges, and this is before the kings came through. And so they were really trying to find their way. And the Bible tells us earlier in that chapter that the Israelites would actually go and, 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 and because they're in caves, they're not, they're, they're tabernacling. They're not even settled, but anything that they tried to do to create some sort of stability for themselves, they would plant crops. And as soon as they do, the Midianites or the Amalekites would come through and tear them up. In other words, they were intimidating them. They were agonizing them. And so the children of Israel found themselves in a position of submission to a people and a place where they were supposed to have authority, praise the Lord. And so we got to think about, are we cowering down and we are submitting in places where we should have authority, praise the Lord. And so this is what was happening in this moment. And so when the angel came, he knew that there was a, a spirit of fear that had overtaken the people. And so he had to speak the truth into this man. You are a mighty man of valor. Hallelujah. But Gideon, his point of view on life was directly focused on the problems. The problems took center stage in his mind. The problems became his God. Oh, no. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you something. Don't give spirit to the problems. Don't give energy to the problems. I know, and I'm talking to myself right now, too. Praise the Lord. Don't give, don't give the problem any fuel because it is what it is. <laughs> Somebody say it is what it is. <laughs> Hallelujah. It is what it is. It, it, whatever it is, that's what it is. Amen. Praise the Lord. So it, it's not that this thing is, is designed to, to, to take over. No, it's not designed to take over. It's designed for you to take over. Praise the Lord. It's designed for you to take over. Hallelujah. Now, listen to what, 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 what Gideon said, verse 13. So, and this is a very interesting conversation between God and uh, Gideon, and, and we have these same conversations too. That's why this is such an incredible word. It says, verse 13, he says, and Gideon said to him, oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all of this befallen us? And where be all his miracles, which our fathers told us of, saying, did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and has delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. This man was completely focused on what he was looking at in front of him. He did not have what we call metacognition, which is the bigger picture. He didn't see the big picture. And so some of us may have to ask God, to open my eyes so I can see the big picture. Hallelujah. Because if you're making decisions based on what's here, hallelujah, and then the blessing is over there, but you looking at right here, you're focused right here on the problem. Praise the Lord. Don't cut yourself off. Hallelujah. Gideon was cutting himself off. He said, wait a minute. We, we hear about all the miracles. So he was talking about the prior generation. Gideon, Gideon wasn't in, Gideon was born after, right? You know how the children of Israel, the Bible tells us that that generation died out, right? I mean, so they did, they had children. And so these children now are growing up. So the children that grew up after they were in Canaan, they did not have that wilderness experience. All they got was the, the stories. 
So Gideon's like, well, well what happened by all that miracles? Why don't we see any right now? Because we're getting beat down by the Midianites. He's like, where's our breakthrough? Where's our deliverance? The Lord helped our forefathers, but, but what about me? What about us? And so let me tell you something. The enemy will cause you, watch this. The enemy will cause you to begin to doubt the very presence of God, the very essence of God in your life if we allow the problem to take center stage and we begin to start to sound like we're complaining, well, God did it for them. How come he's not doing it now? What's going on? Why am I going through this? Thank you, Jesus. Gideon, just like some of us sometimes, don't understand the character and nature of God. Thinking that the Lord has forsaken them, that's what he said. He said the Lord has forsaken us and just given us over to the Midianites. God ain't gave us over to no devil. I want you to get that in spirit. God has not turned you over to the devil. Praise the Lord. If you're going through something. Now, the Bible does talk about um, a reprobate mind, but that's a whole different scenario, okay? So we're not talking about reprobation right now. We're talking about that God is not going to have you in the middle of a promise. Because remember, this was the middle of a promise. This is a middle of a promise. He spoke it to the children of Israel, told them we're going to give you the promised land, told them you're going to inhabit the land, told them you're going to defeat the giant. They were still in the middle of this transition, but yet Gideon, he forgets that part, forgets about the parting of the Red Sea, forgets about those things. He said, well, yeah, they had their miracles, but we don't see any anymore. That's a dangerous place to be in, Gideon. So we're not going to go there, praise the Lord. And so here it is. Stop looking for perfect circumstances to be used by God. Stop looking for perfection. It ain't going to happen. The reality of it is, hallelujah, God can move in the midst of our situation because he's God. And what we have to do is not look for perfect circumstances. You may not ever see perfect circumstances. God wants you to be perfected through the process. God wants us to be perfected through the process. And you know what? And we know that God doesn't call us when we have it all together. God calls us when he's ready to call us. When, when, when Pastor Harris was ministering the other day, Wednesday night, he, he ran through the list of all the different people in the Bible and their issues. Praise the Lord. You know, everybody has something that they were working with. Praise the Lord. Now, the point is, if God was waiting for everybody to be perfect, amen, would not nothing get accomplished. Praise the Lord, because we are never going to be perfect without God. We will never be perfect without him. We can be perfected. Hallelujah. But not to focus on the problems, but focus on the promises. And that's something we can all take. Don't focus on the problems. Focus on the promises. What did God say? Put the word on it. If your circumstances are contrary to what you think they should be, then open your Bible, find a scripture that is defeating that circumstance and begin to declare it. Work that word. Come on, y'all. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And so we have this situation in verse 14. The Lord comes back and says, and the Lord looked upon him and said, go in this might, okay? Get in, go in this might. I'm going to give you the might right now. I'm going to hand it to you through the spoken word, through the rhema. Thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? 
He said, go in this might. God was referencing the valor that he had just spoke into Gideon's spirit. God will speak directly to you. You may not feel the manifestation of a future better position that God has promised you. You might not feel that way today. You might not feel it, but that doesn't mean that it's not there. The element of your healing, the element of your breakthrough, the element of your deliverance is already upon you. If God spoke it, it's already in process, even if you don't feel it, praise the Lord. That's where faith comes in. Hallelujah. You got to faith it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You got to faith it. Hallelujah. God wants us. He says, go in this might. Hallelujah. God gave him the assignment to save Israel from the Midianites. Didn't matter what kind of circumstances that happened up to that point. It didn't matter what led them up to that day. What mattered was that God empowered Gideon through the spoken word right then and there to be able to accomplish what God wanted him to do. One of the very last things that Bishop Hackett told us, he said the word that goes out of the mouth of God will not return unto him void. And remember, he said the word is coming back. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so you have an opportunity to be a part of the manifested word of God. God spoke it into your spirit. He spoke it into Gideon's spirit. He spoke it into all the other people we read about in the Bible. God speaks to his people and tells us what he wants us to do. Because you know what? You are good at something. Think back on what God has empowered you to do. Think back. If you really take inventory of your life and you could say, wow, God did that. He has. You are anointed. Greater line. You are anointed for a particular thing that God wants you to accomplish. You are anointed for a particular thing that God wants you to accomplish. The gifts, the talents, the callings that he's given you are uniquely yours. Don't cast away your confidence. Don't allow circumstances to shade what you know to be true about God. Gideon's mindset was completely the opposite of how God saw him. In verse 15, he broke it down. He said unto him, Judges 6 and 15 says, and he said unto him, oh, my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? My family is poor in Manasseh. I am the least in my father's house. He was saying, we ain't got no money. We ain't got no authority. We don't got no position. We're out here in the cave. We have no nothing. The Midianites destroy everything we produce. How am I going to do this, Lord? And what we got to think about, instead of asking God, you know, how? Just say when. <laughs> that changes the whole dynamic. How am I going to do No, Lord, when am I going to do this? Let's go. Let's go. Change it up. Change it up. What is there to fear when the God of heaven who controls everything is on your side? And the God of heaven, the Lord Jesus Christ, has given you something to do in the kingdom. Do you know that it takes a certain level of spiritual confidence, even for um, pastor? or prophet, or evangelist, or deacon, or brother, or sister, to stand before the people 
and to begin to do something for the Lord. It takes confidence. This is a very practical thing. Confidence is practical. Praise the Lord. And you have it. God has already given it to us. And so here it is. Here's the scripture, 2 Corinthians 12 and 9. 2 Corinthians 12 and 9 says, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Now get a hold of that. God says that his strength is made perfect in our weakness. So Paul was saying, I'm going to glory in my infirmity because now I know if I'm in this and I'm struggling with this and I'm toiling with this, then the power of Christ rests upon me. And some of you right now are in the middle of one of the biggest things that you have ever faced in your lives. And if you consider yourself weak, then according to the word of the Lord, the power of Christ rests upon you. His strength is made perfect in our weakness. That is enough to shout on right there. Because when you're standing and sitting in the middle of difficult circumstances and you're trying to figure out well, what can I do? How can I do? The power of Christ rests upon you because his strength is made perfect in our weakness. And so what, what did God say about you that you can draw from right now? What did God say to you that you can pick up right now, like, like literally right now, and move yourself forward in that thing? What did God say? Go back in the mind. Go back into your memory bank. Go back into your notes on your tablet. Go back to your phone where you put the notes at. Go back to wherever you need to do. Go pull that word out. And what did God say about you that could help you to pick up, move forward in that thing? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our God wins. Verse 16, the Lord comes back. Judges 6 and 16 says, and the Lord said unto him, surely I will be with thee and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. Now, what's interesting here, it goes from the angel talking to Gideon to the Lord talking to him directly now. And the Lord said unto him, surely I will be with thee. Somebody reach up and says, surely the Lord is, gonna, is being with me. Surely reach up and grab that. Surely the Lord is with me. God knows all about the tug of war in your mind about who you think you are versus who God says you are. God understands that whole dynamic. God understands that. So God, when he heard Gideon respond the way he did, he gave him another word, emphasizing that God was with him, that he would be successful. How many words, again, have you gotten that have provided you the faith and the power to do exactly what God intends for you to do. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord is true and sharper than any two-edged sword. Hallelujah. And we thank the Lord. Hallelujah. One thing you got to be careful of, Matthew 5 and 37 says, but let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay, for whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. Now, what is he saying? He's saying, don't be wishy-washy 
with the things that come out of your mouth. He said, let your communication be, if you're responding to the Lord, you're responding to his call, find confidence. Yeah, Lord. Hallelujah. Because if we get into this space where we're contemplating, contemplating the word of God, and we're, we're, we're trying to decide, well, do I receive that or am I not sure? Is, is that really God speaking to me or is it not? Hallelujah. Make a decision. When you know that God has spoken to you, make a decision and don't waver. The Bible says, don't be double-minded. Sometimes you feel like it, sometimes you don't. Mm -mm. Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. We're not trying to be unstable in the Lord. Don't let your circumstances or the enemy or other people or situations cause you to forget that God is totally invested in you. God is totally, totally invested in your spiritual success. God is totally invested in your spiritual success. He is not willing that any man should perish. Not willing that any woman should perish. He's not willing that anybody should perish. Hallelujah. So don't allow yourself to think that way. Be confident in the Lord. Jeremiah says, blesses the man that trusts in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. Hallelujah. There's another scripture in Proverbs about confidence. Proverbs 3, verses 25 and 26, it says, Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. For the Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot from being taken. Hallelujah. And then this is the scripture that God dropped on me on Wednesday. 1 Corinthians 15 and 58, and this is what drove this whole message. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Let me tell you something. Some of you might feel what you're doing might be insignificant. Your labor is not in vain in the Lord. God has you doing something. It counts. It matters. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Philippians 1 and 6 says, be confident of this very thing. In other words, confident, again, that being confident of this very thing, that he which begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. God has started a work in you already, and that work is going to work. The work is going to work. <laughs> Hallelujah. Stay in the game. Stay in there. Keep standing. And as you all know, Gideon's confidence grew and he went on. And you guys know the story. I think um, Elder Turner may have preached this a, um, a short while ago about the 300 men. They went from all these men down to 300. Amen. And the 300 men defeated the enemies of Israel based on the word of the Lord, based on Gideon responding now to the infusion of confidence, the infusion of power, the infusion of the outcome. So that's what you got to understand. It was the infusion of the outcome. When God speaks a word into you, he's speaking the outcome of the situation. And you've got to just embrace it and walk it out and be confident and have faith that it will turn out exactly the way God said it will. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes breaks it down. He says, Ecclesiastes 9, Solomon 
was observing the, the essence of man, working with God, doing things of the Lord. He says, I returned and I saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor favor to men of skill, but time and chance happeneth to them all. In other words, what he was saying is that anybody can win. It's not always gonna be the fastest person, not always gonna be the strongest person, not always gonna be the prettiest person, not always gonna be whatever we think it should be. But by the Bible says that time and chance happens to us all. So think about this. Has God given you your time? Has God given you your chance? You just got to make sure that you stay confident in that thing and move forward in that thing. Hallelujah. And the final thing I'll say in my closing, 1 John 5, 14 through 15 says, and this is the confidence that we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. Hallelujah. It said, this is the confidence that we have. Confidence that if we ask anything according to his will, then we know he hears us. And whatsoever we ask, you're asking God, you know that you're asking according to his will, then you're going to have the petitions that you desire of him. In other words, God is not going to leave you hanging. Hallelujah. God is not going to leave you in a place of desperation, trying to figure it out, trying to make sense of things. God is not going to leave you in a place of a lack of understanding. God wants you to understand that if you are praying according to his will, he hears you. Hallelujah. Lord, you told me to do this, but I don't understand how to do it. Teach me, Lord. Hallelujah. Show me the way. Order my steps. Hallelujah. Fill me with the Holy Ghost, Lord. Teach me, Lord. Guide me, Lord. Lead me, Lord. Hallelujah. It's a yes, Lord. Can we be bold enough to say yes, Lord, and let God fill in the details later? Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. It's a yes, Lord. And you may say, well, that thing is big. That thing is well beyond what I can ever think about myself doing, but that's okay. It ain't you just doing it. It's the God in you that's empowering you to do it. And it could be anything. It could be anything. God might anoint you to go and lay hands on somebody who's been praying for seven years about a condition. And then one day God gives you the knowledge of that situation and anoint you to go lay hands, hallelujah. And then you go because you're going in the confidence that God has given you, hallelujah. And you go and lay hands being confident that the God that we serve, the Lord Jesus Christ with his anointing that destroys every yoke of bondage is going to transfer in that prayer. And that person is gonna receive their touch from God. It could be something like that. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Gideon ultimately got it accomplished. Church, you will ultimately get it accomplished. Just accept that God has chosen you for a time such as this, that God has anointed you, empowered you, 
hallelujah, and is raising you up with all our deficiencies and all. Doesn't matter. Hallelujah. Because if God wants to use you, he will use you exactly the way that you are. And if, if there is something else that you need, you better believe he is going to supply it. And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Saints of God, walk in your godly confidence and know that he says that he will never leave us nor forsake us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. Hallelujah. You have that kind of assurance from our great, big, wonderful God. Hallelujah. Be encouraged today, saints. Be encouraged. Hallelujah. Godfidence. Yes, there it is. <laughs> I love it, evangelist. Godfidence. There it is. Godfidence. Thank you, Jesus. Walk in your godly confidence and watch what God does. Hallelujah, because he is bringing things to pass in this scene, because we heard it, we know he's coming back real soon. So now's the time for stuff to be manifesting. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Father God, we give thanks for the ministry of your word. Have your way, Lord Jesus. Let everybody, Lord, who received this word, let it take root in their spirit that they may prosper from the word that you've delivered today. Thank you, Father God. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, church. Praise the Lord. Pastor, hallelujah, turn it over to you. Amen.